I paid a random guy to stalk me to get my boyfriend jealous. This kind of is not my story time. I'm sending me an Instagram. I repeat, this is not my story time. My boyfriend's already tried to break up with me four times this month. So I needed to think of a plan to make him jealous so that he could want to be with me. Here's a little backstory on how we met. He and I both come from the same country and we actually lived in the same neighborhood. His parents moved to the US and then my parents moved to the US. So when we got there, luckily we knew his family and it was really nice because my parents had somebody they could rely on. Well, can you probably guess? I had the biggest crush with him. I was literally in love with him from the time I met him when we were back in our country. When we would play as kids, I was like 10. But when we moved to the States, I was 16. So I was a little bit more grown up. I was hoping that he would see me and fall in love with me at first sight. But unfortunately, it didn't happen like that. Instead, I waited until we were in college. I had a full glow up at this point. I grew out my hair and I stopped coloring it blonde. I got myself a skincare routine and I just decided to dress more feminine. I was 20 years old. I looked like a whole different person and I looked like a woman. He had been traveling for about a year and finally he came back. And the day he came back, our parents decided to have dinner together. And when he saw me again for the first time, he actually did a double take. It's like he almost didn't recognize who I was. Throughout the dinner, he kept staring at me. And finally, at the end of the night, I told him that I liked him. This is when he told me that he had never thought of me that way. And I asked him if we could just hang out for the week. He said yes. And by the end of the week, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And this is where I messed up. I started becoming really jealous and controlling. I realized that he had a lot of girlfriends and he just always was hanging out with his friends. He was always texting his friend group. And I just felt like he wasn't giving me enough attention. So I told him that he needed to spend more time with me and less time with his friends. And he agreed. One night while he was taking a nap, I installed an app on his phone that lets me track him. The app also forwards all of his messages over to my phone. This just made me feel better about the relationship. But then he started accusing me of being controlling. I guess me telling him to hang out with me more and less with his friends was not good. And also I told him to stop talking to his girlfriend. Then he broke up with me. And I was devastated. Now look, yes, I was a little bit jealous and controlling, but I mean, come on. All relationships are like that. So I came up with a plan. I went up to this random guy in my college and I told him that if he stalked me, I would pay him $100 a week. I just wanted him to send me text messages emails and pictures of myself like he was following me around and he would just like take a picture and then send it to me and then i started forwarding all of that to my ex and it actually started to work he said that he wanted to protect me so he started spending more time with me he would always make sure that i got home safe then i told him that my stalker spoke to me and that he was actually cute and that maybe i should just date my stalker instead of him he drove all the way to my house and asked me to be his girlfriend again everything was okay for a little bit but then i started getting jealous again like i said he's tried to break up with me four times this month so i told him that my stalker came back i kind of feel bad for lying about the stalker i don't want him to break up with me am i crazy for doing this what do you think i am so angry at my mother-in-law right now so we decided to try beer family this weekend see because it's easter we thought we would do a nice little easter trail for the kids the adults can kind of get together have a few easter cocktails just try to be a normal family okay which can i say it's quite hard when you have a narcissistic mother-in-law one thing about me is i love planning stuff my house is the central hub for all family gatherings i love going on pinterest and recreating loads of stuff like i just love planning it makes me so happy my husband mark actually said to me like oh my god about a year ago that oh my god you really influenced my mum to start like planning things like she never used to love it but now she does like she saw how much you loved it and really took inspiration and i thought she wants to be me basically my mother-in-law really really wanted to plan this easter egg hunt with all of the grandkids but see i'm not a control freak like my mother-in-law so obviously i was like yeah of course you can plan it like we can do it in my house come round and you know plan it all basically she did she started coming round and where to like hide the eggs it was quite cute to be honest and we did almost bond one thing i did keep saying to her during this process is please please remember my child's really allergic and sensitive to a lot of stuff she knows this i mean there's not even that much there's maybe like five bits of food and like ingredients that you can't have at all and one of them being cocoa beans so obviously i was asking her like do you want me to go and get like this special easter eggs that we can get him or how are you gonna get around this easter egg hunt so he doesn't pick up the wrong ones she's like no i can go get the special easter eggs i'll make sure it's all color coded so we make sure he gets the right ones and i thought like whatever i'll trust her for this time it's okay hey today came and she wanted to surprise all the adults with it as well so me and mark and all of the siblings and grandchildren went out for a like good friday breakfast she could set up the whole house and to be fair she did a great job we came in it looked amazing the kids absolutely loved it now even though i weren't necessarily worried i still did double check that she had the correct names and she yelled at me she was like stop controlling what i'm doing like i know my grandson's allergic to stuff put him in danger i don't need your help so the easter egg hunt finished 
finished and all the kids kind of had their eggs on the floor and were counting them out to see who won and they were also eating them. As this was happening, I noticed one of the grandkids had different eggs to everyone else and you would like to think this was my son and it wasn't. Easter eggs looked exactly the same in the exact same wrapping as all of the other kids. One of the other kids had a different one. So I just calmly take one off my son. Look at the ingredients, look around it. And he has ones with cocoa beans in it. I really, really calmly asked my son how many of these he has had. Plies three. They're obviously only these like tiny ones. He hasn't had three full Easter eggs. Obviously that is way enough to cause a reaction. I literally grab him, pull him into the car while screaming, obviously, and my mother-in-law, you didn't check hard enough. My son has the incorrect one. This is all stemmed from her refusing to ask for help. If she simply let me double check and let other people get involved, it wouldn't have happened. But she feels the need to do everything by her Am I wrong for not allowing my girlfriend to be a stay-at-home mom even though I could afford to? Unbiased opinion before I read anything? Yes. But let's continue. My 29 male girlfriend, 23 Emily, and I have been dating for four years. Okay, a little sus. She was 19. And you were 25. You may have been talking to her when she was... You're not illegal, but it's legal, but still iffy for me. Anyways, my 29 male, girlfriend, 23 female, Emily and I have been dating for four years and have lived together since last October. She graduated from college last year and was able to get a job that paid an okay salary for an entry-level position. She didn't like the job too much, but she mentioned that it had good opportunities for promotion and would look good on her resume. So she hoped to move on to more interesting work that she is more passionate about soon. This January, my girlfriend became pregnant with a girl by accident. It was unplanned and we considered abortion but decided to keep the baby. We have since been preparing for birth. We have good relationships with both my and her parents both set of parents have said they'd be willing to babysit our daughter for free wait your guys' parents would charge you to watch your kid oh okay i see can't relate but okay recently my girlfriend told me that she would like to quit her job after the baby is born to be a stay-at-home mom her reasons for doing so were the following one she's getting very attached to our baby even though it's not born yet and the idea of dropping her off to a babysitter, even if that babysitter is one of our parents who we all know would take good care of her, it makes her want to cry. Her mom was a stay-at-home mom, which allowed her to have home-cooked meals every day and do lots of fun stuff that she couldn't do with the babysitter. She wants to provide the same experience for our daughter. 3. She no longer likes her job and is unsure if she wants to even continue down the same career path. She regrets her major in accounting and wishes she had majored in something she is passionate about instead of something that just makes good money. 4. I recently got a promotion to a supervisor position in my company that came with a pay raise of nearly $40,000 so I can afford to support her and our daughter. 5. She didn't say it, but one of her friends recently gave birth and became a stay-at-home mom, so I'm sure that influenced her decision. She also tried to convince me by saying that she could cook all of my favorite meals and do all of the chores. I said no for a few reasons. 1. We were planning to buy a house in the next couple of years, and with me being the only one working, that would set us back years in getting one. 2. I grew up poor. During my entire childhood, I only went to the movie theaters a couple of times because my parents could not afford to take me out to do fun stuff like that often, for example. I got a pair of new shoes once a year and bought my clothes from Walmart. With both of our incomes, we have been able to enjoy a very nice lifestyle. We both drive nice cars, go shopping, order nice restaurants or the movies regularly, and have also been on some nice trips and vacations. With only one income, we would have to curtail our spending by a lot. With both of us working, we can keep our current lifestyle even after the baby. There are many things I still want to do in places I want to go to and we would have to put all of our life plans on hold for several years since my income alone would not be enough. So we would have to wait until I got even more raises or saved for a long time. 3. I just don't want the pressure of being the only person to provide for my family. Well, no offense, like I get your points but right there, that's called being a man. Providing for your family, that's the pressure you get. Women get the pressure of getting pregnant, giving birth, destroying your body. This is your pressure. Okay, can't compare, but okay. Also, while telling her no, I might have said that the reason why she was feeling so attached to the baby was pregnancy hormones and they would soon pass. So yeah, not my best choice of words. I mentioned this to my friends and family. I've been told by some people that a true man provides for his family. Adar! And that I'm evil for wanting to separate a mother from her baby when I could afford to let her stay at home. So, am I the asshole? Yeah, my opinion don't change. Did you not talk about this? before accidentally coming pregnant or whatever like these are discussions you should have with someone hey if we ever decide to have children in the future how would you like to go about this do you want to continue working do you want to be a stay-at-home mom do you know what that looks like for us if you decide to be a stay-at-home mom you make a pros and cons list right to have a mom at home and to be able to have a roof over your head if you can 
afford it, which sounds like you can, you just have to give up some luxuries that you have in life, I would do it. Okay, you can't go on two vacations a year. Go on one. Like, it makes a big difference being home with your child than giving them to someone else. So, I understand that point. What I really took away from this is that you and your girlfriend are very, very unprepared to bring the child in this world because you guys are having problems now. Wait until you have a baby and you lose all your sleep. Your house is a mess. Her hormones are out of control. Good luck. Update for am i the asshole for telling my husband's affair baby's family to either come and get the kid or i'm calling cps i'm no longer divorcing roger there were complications from his heart attack and he passed away i'm conflicted he was the love of my life but also a cheating piece of trash to the best of my knowledge the mother will not be returning from europe the child is currently with her parents they asked me what I wanted to do. Why are they asking you what you want to do with a baby that has nothing to do with you? This is their child's child, their grandchild. They should be asking themselves, what are we going to do? The family asked me what I wanted to do. I recommended adoption. Not that I adopt the child, but that they put the child up for adoption. They didn't like that suggestion. Neither did my children. Well, then they can keep the baby. I don't understand what the problem is. I don't understand what the problem is. The one person who has no biological relation, no type of relationship or ties to this child is the one person that wants nothing to do with this child. But that's the one person everybody wants to take care of this child. That is fucking ridiculous. If you guys feel so strongly about the baby, then one of y'all need to step up and adopt the child. They said I'm being cold and cruel. I suggested that since the child was related to them and not to me, that they step up. Neither has accepted that suggestion either. I fucking bet they didn't. I fucking bet. I was the sole beneficiary of Roger's estate. So I imagine lawyers will be involved in getting the child some sort of support. I will pay whatever is ordered by the court out of the estate. I will not pay one cent out of my own money. That's all I have to say on this matter. Girl, this is fucking insane. The fact that you are having to fight everybody because you do not want to care for a child that's not yours. That is insane. You had nothing to do with this child. It is not your fault that your children's father is a lying, cheating piece of shit. It is not your fault that these people's daughter cheated with the married man and then decided to leave when she couldn't handle being a mom. That's not none of your fault. None of that has anything to do with you. You have no type of responsibility to this child. None whatsoever. Now, I'm sorry that your husband has passed away. Like, I know, even though he's a lying, cheating piece of shit, clearly you still have feelings for him and you're grieving. So I am sorry that your husband passed away. I am. But, girl, go on vacation. I need you to just go ahead and just book you a vacation somewhere for a couple weeks. Just just go and sit by the beach or get a spa. And I want you to drink until you can't feel your toes. Because, mama, you need it. You need it. This shit is not okay. And you do not deserve to have to go through this. Will I be the asshole if I told my friend his online bully is his girlfriend? I, 30 female, know a couple. Let's call them Blair, 28 female, and Ben, 30 male. I've known them both separately before they met and started dating. They were in love pretty fast and became a couple. We always thought that they were perfect for each other, both attractive, fun, energetic people who were crazy about each other, and also great friends to the rest of us. Important note, we are all from different countries living as expats in a country. So, after a while, Ben had some family problems back home, which required him to fly back to be with his family. But this would be temporary. Blair has always been great, supportive, and understanding towards Ben. He would always go around saying how happy he was and how proud he was of his relationship. I met Blair recently for a little girl's outing. It's been about five to six months since Ben left. After a few drinks, she told me that she had made a fake Instagram account to test her boyfriend. I thought it was weird, but I didn't say much. She said he didn't reply and blocked the fake account, which should have been the end of her test, in my opinion. She continued to tell me that she used another fake account to add him and call him names like ugly, good for nothing, etc., etc. Pretty bad stuff. I was flabbergasted and could not believe what the F was happening. I asked her why on earth she'd do such a thing. Her explanation was that she is the best girlfriend he can have 
and she just wanted to remind him how great she is so he can appreciate her more. Will I be the asshole if I told my friend his online bully is his girlfriend? She wanted to show him how horrible the dating pool is and how he should hold on to her tight. I told her this was insane, but she continued to tell me no and this is nothing harmful. Ben had told me about a fake account messaging him, but I didn't know it was her. Ben assumed it was an ex who was proven to be stalking weirdo. Now I know that it's not her. It's actually his loving girlfriend. I told Blair she needs to stop, and I would love to help her work on the issues that make her act like this. I tried to help explain how this will eventually ruin her relationship and Ben's confidence as well. But she is not listening, so I told her if she didn't stop, I would go ahead and tell Ben everything. I have screenshots of us discussing this matter over text, how she's not willing to stop. Would I be the asshole if I told Ben everything? My boyfriend says Ben needs to know, and I totally agree because nobody deserves to be treated this way. But some of my friends back home told me not to tell him, but instead convince her to come clean, which I've been trying to, to no avail. So, will I be the asshole? Am I the asshole for inviting my cousin, brother, uncle, and dad to my wedding over a prank? I, female 22, grew up in a family where men prank and tease each other. Ever since my fiance, Tim 23, and I got engaged, my cousin, brother, dad, and uncle joked about running some tests to see what type of man Tim is. They'd done some stuff like forcing him to play chess four times in a row, secretly slash his tires to see if he'd fix it himself like a man or get help from those lazy guys. They asked him questions like what joke he'd like to tell his future mother-in-law, his opinions on abortion, Jesus, gender, equality, etc. They also tested his fishing and hunting skills, overwhelmed him with hypothetical scenarios, tested his decision-making abilities or mental strength, they, call, they kept calling him slow and soft, but he has a medical condition, which is asthma, but they think he's making excuses. I demanded they stop, but dad said this is just typical stuff men challenge each other with and said that I was ruining the fun. Last week, they took Tim on a three-day trip and hit his inhaler. He left them and returned in seven hours and told me. I was seething after he said they admitted to hiding it as a challenge. I exploded on them when they returned. Cousin asked if little Timmy ran to me to tattle. I yelled that all four of them are uninvited to my wedding. My brother freaked out, saying it was a prank and they were going to give it back. Dad said they'll apologize if I insist, but Tim will have lost the little respect they gained for him and in their eyes will always be the soft college kid who's not up for the challenge. I called him and the others awful and then I left. My cousin is begging that we talk. My uncle has been quiet, but dad is so mad, and now he's getting mom involved to get me to reconsider the decision. But I refused to reinvite them. Mom is saying that I'm exaggerating and should let the bygones be bygones and not let this ruin my relationship with my family. Am I the asshole for going off on my wife for commenting about our three week old daughter's looks? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I will list the source in the caption of this video. My daughter, our second child, is three weeks old. Pre-pregnancy, my wife was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder and depression. In the days since birthing our baby girl, is most definitely experiencing postpartum depression. Our first child, our son, looks so much like her. In fact, if you look at baby photos of my wife, they look almost exactly like our son's baby photos. And my wife is a looker, so my son is damn cute. Our daughter got a bit more of my side's gene pool. Her hairline kind of has a widow's peak, which I've had since I was a baby. Her lips are relatively thin, like me. Her nose is a little larger than our son's was. I have a Middle Eastern classic hook nose. Nearly every day in my daughter's 21 days on this earth, my wife has made comments to baby girl about how she's so sad she got daddy's features. Some of the things my wife has said to baby girl are, don't worry, I'll get you a nose job as soon as you're old enough. I wish you had gotten more of my features. My family is beautiful and all of the women are timeless. Your dad's family, not so much. Son has beautiful pouty lips and you got stuck with those pencil lips. Ooh, it's really tough being a girl. Up until yesterday, I was taking a softer approach with comments like, okay, be nice. Part two. Am I the asshole for going off on my wife for commenting about her three week old daughter's looks? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I will list the source in the caption of this video. Up until yesterday, I was taking a softer approach with comments like, okay, be nice and okay, chillax. 
But today I had enough and just snapped and yelled at her for like five minutes straight. And I cursed quite a bit too. The gist of my statements were, I don't care if she can't understand what you're saying. Stop putting that shit into the universe. Sun can understand you, so stop this garbage. I can understand you, so stop putting this shit in my head and making me listen to it. Yeah, life on girls is tough in this world, especially when their mom is shitting all over their appearance. She's fucking three weeks old and is still perfect and noble and hasn't hurt a goddamn soul. Stop projecting onto her. You regularly tell me how your mom fucked up your psyche with all of her comments about your appearance, so why the fuck are you doing the same to baby girl? I recognize that her part in the comments stem from anxiety and depression, as well as her postpartum depression. And I also recognize that there is a lot of stems from her mom's influence on her psyche. I also recognize that the yelling and berating people is rarely the right thing. So, am I the asshole for going off on my wife for commenting about our three-week-old daughter's looks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Am I the asshole for meeting with my dad even though he stole my brother's wife? I honestly can't even believe that I'm posting this because sometimes it just feels like I walked out of a bad story. But pretty much, I have two siblings, my sister Cass and my brother Mark. Um, our parents divorced when I was young, like about 10 years old, and we split time between the both of them. Cass has always been closer to our dad and she's never liked our brother Mark to the point of claiming things about Mark that just are really hard to believe. However, no matter how much she's disliked our brother Mark, she's always loved me. Five years ago, it turned out that Mark's wife Jane had been cheating on him for a while with our father. It obviously caused a lot of chaos in our family. Cass sided with our dad and moved in with him, and I sided with Mark, and Mark moved in with our mom. But even though I sided with Mark, I still kept in contact with Cass and Mark was totally fine with that. And I had not seen my dad since he dropped off my sister for Mother's Day. Am I the asshole for meeting with my dad even though he stole my brother's wife? And I had not seen my dad since he dropped off my sister for Mother's Day and he was with Jane. I was outside walking home and he was driving by and for some reason I agreed to have coffee with them. I don't know why. It was an extremely tense conversation between us and I told him that he will not be invited to my wedding and I didn't know if I wanted to ever get to know him and Jane's kids. Oddly enough, he told me that I did the right thing by choosing my brother's side over his in the situation. It was weird, but we stayed for about half an hour and then my dad dropped me off at the front door of my mom's house and when he was dropping me off, Mark was looking outside the window so he saw me getting out of my dad's car and ever since then, he's been extremely snippy and just sassy towards me. I definitely think it's because he's mad that I was talking to my dad so I just want to know, am I the asshole for talking to my dad? Am I the asshole for switching to regular milk to prove my lactose intolerant roommate keeps stealing from me? Me and two other guys share an apartment together and we split all the bills. The only thing we don't split costs on is groceries. Everyone's in charge of buying their own food and we don't touch whatever doesn't belong to us in the fridge. We put our names on everything so no one gets mixed up. This issue has been going on for almost a year and I'm sick of it. One of my roommates, R, keeps stealing my food. I get home from work and containers with my leftovers are sometimes missing. They have my name written on it. Or my stuff finishes too quick. My gallon of milk, for example. I buy almond milk because I like the taste. But it seems to finish after a week even though I've drank it only once or twice. I confronted R about this lots of times and that's caused a lot of arguments. He outright denies it and tells me I'm crazy even though it's so obvious. My other roommate and I carpool together because we both work the same early morning shifts around the same area, so I know it's not him. It's always after we get back home and R is already left for work, so that I notice my food is gone. My roommates also had a similar problem, but not as often as I do. I'm guessing because R doesn't like what he buys. The funny thing is, R buys a lot for himself and is even more stingy about his food. He will literally point out what's his when he comes back from grocery shopping and tells us to not touch it. Last week, my milk was nearly empty again and I got fed up. I went to the liquor store and bought regular dairy milk. I drank what was left of my almond milk and refilled the gallon with the one I bought. This was to catch slash prove R is the one stealing since he's lactose intolerant. The next day, Saturday, we get back from work and R is pissed. He yelled at me that he was stuck in the bathroom for 40 minutes with diarrhea because of my milk. He was using it to make a shake. 
I only responded with, so then you're the one who's been stealing. He freaking exploded. Yeah, he admitted he was sometimes drinking my milk and eating my food, but he was even more mad that I switched milks than the fact that he was caught. I told him I wouldn't have done that if he just stopped taking my stuff from the fridge or at least told the truth, the truth instead of trying to make it seem like I was making it up. My roommate backed me up and thought it was kind of funny he got payback for stealing from us. It's a little tense right now and my room told me R is trying to convince him to agree to kick me out. Little does he know, we're both looking to move somewhere else together because we are sick of his shit. I told somebody what happened and a few think that I was an asshole for that. I feel like I'm not in the wrong here. He was taking my food and not even owning up to it and I want to prove it. Does that make me the asshole? My wife had an affair, but I can't divorce her because I'll be the one going broke. Disclaimer, this is not my story. This is an anonymous submission. I, 35 male, found out my wife of 11 years, Grace, 36 female, is having an affair. We've been together for 16 years and have three kids, 15 male and twin girls, 14. For the last few months since her breast augmentation and tummy tuck, Grace has been distant. At first, I thought it was because she was recovering from her procedure, but after her recovery, nothing changed. I always felt like her wanting a mommy makeover came out of nowhere, but I have always been a firm believer in doing what makes you happy. So I gave her the okay to schedule it and I paid for it. I took three weeks off during her recovery and I assumed all roles that she took, cooking and carpooling for the kids. A few weeks ago, I went through her phone while she was in the shower. I wanted to send myself some of the photos from our son's last football game, and I saw inappropriate conversations with my business partner, Chaz. This affair has been going on for a few months, before her surgery even. My whole world came crashing down. What hurt the most is she didn't even acknowledge that I had been pulling away from her recently. I have spoken with multiple attorneys, but they have let me know despite the evidence I have from the affair, it would be more costly for me to go forward with a divorce than to just wait it out. Part two, my wife had an affair, but I can't divorce her because I'll be the one going broke. Disclaimer, this is not my story. This is an anonymous submission. I have spoken with multiple attorneys, but they have let me know, despite the evidence I have from her affair, it would be more costly for me to go forward with a divorce than it is to just wait it out a few more years until our last child becomes 18. Since we do not have a prenuptial agreement, I still have to pay child support for our three kids as well as alimony because she has been a housewife since before we were married, unless I am able to convince her to sign a postnuptial agreement. After talks with various attorneys, I know my best course of action is to stay married for the next four years before filing. I'm devastated that my kids will no longer know what it means to grow up with both parents. I know I can push my feelings aside to be present for all of the moments for my kids, but I worry Grace won't be able to, either because she'll be bitter about her divorce and what she gets after, or because Chaz will suffer the same financial future as me. And I'm not looking forward to funding their future for the years to come. I let Chaz's wife know about the affair, and she has also spoken with a lawyer about her best course of action. I agreed to keep quiet about the affair until she can get her things in order. She will be hiring a PI to document the affair. After she has started the divorce process, I will be able to talk to Grace. Due to her strict integrity clause, Chaz will be forced to sell his portion of the company to me. Half of this money will go to Chaz's wife, but if I'm lucky, I'll be able to keep this if we file for divorce before the- Would I be the asshole for wanting to walk my daughter down the aisle by myself? So my wife, 43 female, and I, 44 male, adopted my daughter when she was 14, along with her two bio brothers, eight and six. We adopted them all so they could be kept together, and I love them with all my heart. Now my daughter is 25 and married and getting married to Dan, who is a great guy, and they've been dating for three years now and just got engaged eight months ago. My wife has been helping my daughter plan everything and doing the regular mom and daughter wedding things while my son's 19 and 17 and I just do as we're told and try to help out when we can. They're doing a small wedding, but I'm paying for a third and so is her fiance's father, Dan's dad, and the happy couple is doing the other third. Now my daughter had us all go out to a fancy dinner two days ago with her fiance And that's when she told us that she would like myself and her mother, my wife, to walk her down the aisle. She says that she's so happy to have found her forever home with us and how she loves us both so much and wants us to both give her away. My wife was ecstatic and said yes while I just nodded and tried to hide the hurt I felt. I've always dreamed of giving my daughter away as I think it's a precious moment that should just be between the father and daughter. No one seems to have caught on about my hurt yet, but I wanted to talk to my wife about it and to see if she could step down and let me have it. So would I be the asshole?